Hello, this is Matthew, and today I'm going to be going over some of my frequently asked questions. So yeah, let's get right into it. Starting us off with our first question, what medium do I use? Well, I started as a traditional artist. I would use pencil or pens or acrylic paints, uh, pastel pencils even, charcoal, basically everything. But as of the last year or so, I've mainly just been doing digital drawing. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with that, just think of a software or an app that you can buy and download specifically for your computer, for your tablet, iPad, sometimes even your phone, and it is specifically just built to draw on it. And they're kind of similar to traditional art, but they're also a little different. Uh, I've got two that I predominantly use. I use Rebel 4, but then I also use Clip Studio Paint Pro. And today I'm going to show you Clip Studio Paint Pro. That's the one I've used the most. So yeah, I'll show you that now. Okay, so now we are inside of Clip Studio Paint Pro. It looks a little bit overwhelming. There's a lot of buttons everywhere, but I promise it, it's not that bad. I'll, it'll make sense here soon. So you can see here uh, with my cursor, I am hovering over my screen with my stylus. I'm not touching it. I'm just hovering over it. And if you're unfamiliar with what a, style, a stylus is, just think of a pencil that you can use for your computer, where you're literally touching the screen as if it was a piece of paper. It looks like a pencil and it acts like one. So I'm gonna just hover over that. This here is our paper or our canvas. The This software calls it paper, so I'll just call it paper. So here's our paper. And over here are our different tools. We've got a pencil, a pen, a brush, an airbrush, decorations, which I'll show you later, but I don't really use this much, eraser, and then a blender. So just starting us out with a pencil, I've got it selected as you can see there. If I come over uh, and I just press down on the screen and then move around, I'm making lines exactly like if it was on a piece of paper. So you can see I make all sorts of lines. Anything I want to do, I can do it right there. And I'll go down, just for example, the brush. You can see how this looks different and it's showing some uh, actual canvas going through it. So we've got a lot of different tools and within these tools, there's subsets. So I clicked on the pencil and I'm gonna go up here and click right here. And now I've got a list of different types of pencils. So you can see this one's pretty different than the one I was just using. And then if I click back to what I was on, down here, I can adjust the size of it. So if I click this, it's gonna be larger. Then if I click on a smaller one, it's gonna become smaller. Up here, I can change the density of my brush. So the higher the density, the more opaque. But then if I take this and lower it, you can see it is much less opaque now. So that's how you adjust all your tools and things like that. So what's on the right side? Well, starting us off with one of the most important things, the color wheel. So I can move around and then pick all these different colors that I want. I really never use this for colors since I'm colorblind. Uh, I'll explain how I color later on, but yeah, I typically just use this gray scale here on the left, but yeah, that is a very important thing there. Right here is my reference photo. I can put whatever photo I want in here and I just use that as reference for my drawing. I can zoom in on it. I can move it around. I can zoom out on it. I can even pick up this whole thing and move it. Uh, I typically just leave it right here because it's out of the way. That way I can see my entire canvas or my paper. And so yeah, there, that's where my reference photo is. And then over here on the right, we've got this thing that says paper and layer. What is that? This is where it, it is not really reminiscent of traditional art at all. We've got our paper here and this little eye symbol, if I click that, it makes it invisible. So notice how the paper went away. I can do the same thing. Everything we just drew was on layer one. So if I just make it invisible by tapping that, it's now a clear canvas. Now I can also delete this layer entirely and now it's gone. And if I click right here, I make a new layer. Well, why would you want different layers? What does that even mean? I'll show you. So just as an example, I'm gonna make some random lines like this on layer two. 
and I'm gonna go to layer one, which is under it. This is how it goes. This is on the bottom, this is on top of paper, and this is on top of layer one. So on layer one, I'm gonna go like this. Now let's say, for example, I wanted to get rid of the vertical lines and not the horizontal ones. On a piece of paper, that would be really hard to get rid of, right? But in this one, let me see if I remember which one I did this on. Oh, I don't even remember which ones I said I wanted to get rid of. I think I said the vertical ones. So if I wanted to get rid of the vertical ones without getting rid of the horizontal ones, since they're on two different layers, I can do that. Because I'm not touching layer one. On layer one, if I click on layer one, I can get rid of this. But otherwise, if I'm on any other layer, layer one is not being affected. So that's one use, but let me show you that in an actual practical use. So let me clear all this out. The way I tend to draw is I've got my darks on layer one, my base colors. So in this case, it'll just be black. So I'm gonna take my black right here. And let's say I wanted that to be my undertones. Well, I'm gonna go on layer two now and I'm gonna use some light. I'm gonna use light in this case and I'm gonna make let's just call these details let's just attempt to pretend that this is hair so now if I wanted to make this lighter if I wanted to make the dark lighter and this was traditional drawing you'd have to go in and try and go in between everything like this and now look at how sloppy that is you just messed up all your details so I'm gonna go back undo what I just did I'm gonna go to layer one and now I can make the undertones lighter without messing with my details that's the practical use of this when you've got everything on different layers it makes it to where you can individually change the things you want to change without changing things you don't want to change so yeah that is a very basic intro into digital drawing I will be making an additional video specifically into my setup in here and some of my techniques I use but yeah that is the medium I use. I hope that cleared up some of your confusion, especially if you're not familiar with Clip Studio Paint Pro or just with digital drawing, period. So yeah, let's move on to the next question. Okay, next question. How do I color my drawings? I just mentioned how I don't use the color wheel much. So if that's the case, how am I drawing? Well, I'm gonna go back to the drawing software. Let's go there now. All right, we are in the drawing software again. And there's one tool that I did not talk about earlier, and that would be the eyedropper tool. That is right above the pencil here, so I'm gonna click on that. This is the tool that allows me to color by itself, this one tool. So if you see here on the color wheel, it's just somewhere random right now. This tool allows, so when you tap something, it gives you that color. So if I go to the canvas, there's nothing on it, it's just pure white. If I tap it, notice the color wheel just jumped to pure white. Well, I've got my reference photo in here for a reason. There's a reason why I didn't print it out and I'm not looking at it physically. It's because I can take my eyedropper, tap a spot, let's just say this guy for example, and look at the color wheel. It's jumping all around because as I'm hovering over different things, it's giving me the different colors. So I'm just gonna go right here and then I'm gonna go to my brush and now my brush has that color. It's not 100% perfect all the time, but considering I would never be able to at all, it is a complete game changer. So just for example, I'm just gonna zoom in and let's say I want the color of this spot right here. I take that, go to my brush, and then there we go. And once I have a lot of the basic colors in a photo, I can then just take it. Let's say I wanted this color again, I just tap it. And then here, I've got it again. Or I want this one again, I just tap it and then there I have it again. So I take some liberties in my drawing so that I don't have to constantly pull from the reference photo. But yeah, that is the tool that allows me to color. I hope that makes sense. Uh, it essentially just the most summarized version I could say of this, the eyedropper tool allows me to look at my reference photo and pull colors directly from it. That way I know I'm using the right ones. So yeah, let's move on to the next question. Okay, this is the last question for now, but it is how can you have an original digital drawing? So, 
we've already seen that digital drawing is on my computer. It's just a file on my computer. That's all it is. So how do you get the original of that? Because if I give you a, the file of it, you still don't really have the original. What are you going to do with that? And so how do you get a tangible original digital drawing? So the way I describe it is the very first print of the drawing is the original. And how will you know if you have the original? First of all, uh, when you buy through me, it will say clearly in the purchasing option if it's the original. But how do you actually tell? The back of every print of every drawing I've done and will do is going to be stamped with my stamp. And then I'm going to sign below that stamp. I'm going to date that specific date. And then I'm going to number it. And that number is the number of prints that I've made of the specific piece. So for example, if you have number one, you've got the original. If you've got number two, you have the second one that was printed. If you've got number three, you have the third one that was printed. So the original will always have the stamp, the signature under it, the date, and number one. But specifically, you're looking for the number one. So that is how you have an original digital drawing. Thank you for watching. I hope that I answered some of the questions you might have been having or cleared up some confusion, especially if you were unfamiliar with digital drawing. If you've got any other questions at all, feel free to drop a comment on this video or you can shoot me an email. My email is in the description of this video, but you can also find it on my website. Um, I will be making several more videos on these specific topics, but also just in general, so be on the lookout for that. See ya. Have a great day.